we are back. Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Macro Golf Podcast. Joe, how are we doing? All good. Absolutely excited, like a little kid, for this weekend because we are heading up to the <laughs> Open, and uh, we are off. Yeah, I just can't wait. I just can't wait. Uh, yeah, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be. I keep checking, keep checking the weather up every five minutes, seeing if it's updated. I think at the moment we're getting a little bit drizzle, but you know what? I, 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 I couldn't care less to be honest. I just, I'm absolutely guys. Just to see the best players in the world in whatever condition. If it's top conditions, it's going to be great to watch them struggle. It's going to be great to watch them have to battle the wind, which I think is going to come. I think it's going to be windy on Sunday. Uh, and if the yeah, sun shining, yeah. then you know what better place is there to just chill out, watch watch the best players in the world doing their thing and. Uh, Oh, 100%. I've been watching tons and tons of vlogs of uh, the new course layout, the new 17th hole that they got the path three that everyone's going wild about. Like, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a fun one. Um, we've got a really good podcast today, guys. So we're doing five common mistakes in strength training that we see for for golfers that we've kind of seen with our clients, just just the general public that we think are quite easily avoidable, um, and how kind of just tweaking a few things could massively impact your performance on the course and off the course and aesthetically strength wise pretty much everything going for you just little things that sometimes people just don't think about at all um and i think we're going to start off i'm going to go with um being too golf specific training looking too golf specific and we've, we've spoken about this before on the podcast we've had some I've had one of my um, head pros send me some videos from a, a coach of his in America of guys swinging barbells and doing all sorts of nonsense in the gym that looks like a swing and it does nothing. Like there's no carryover to performance at all. Um, yet there seems to be this still obsession with making your training in the gym look like a golf swing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where to start with that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, this is an interesting one. Like, and as we get through the list, like some of these things on this list are uh, some things we've had clients say to us from, you know, they'll come to us yeah. and say they want to help with their training. This is some of the things they might have been doing previously, or there's some things that we, you know, just from discussion we've had with people. This one you're saying now is sometimes I have to is one that I have sometimes have to drag people away from getting attracted to. It's actually a it's a yeah. it's one that people don't often do that off do that much but it's something they get attracted to maybe from social media or from posts they've seen or or doing whatever um yeah and, and it's very say it's, it's very salesy the, the 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 post you'll see on instagram is is do this exercise to to hit a draw or, or things like that and it's if you if you don't know much about strength training or you don't know much about training at all it goes oh sweet perfect i can do this exercise in the gym i'm gonna change my shot shape from a slice into a draw like just doesn't quite work like that and it's also not how you're going to spend your time best um the gym should be for changing performance it shouldn't be for changing your swing or anything like that yeah 100 percent. like i think what's, what's important for us to mention here is that the relationship between swing oh well, we, we did this on the mobility one uh actually we spoke a lot about this on the mobility one like the relationship between your your golf swing and what exercises you're doing in the gym is is very loose there's you know, there's plenty of people that are very, very good at performing many exercises in the gym that have terrible golf swings. And there's also people with very, very good golf swings that wouldn't be able to do some of these exercises. There are definitely some things that will help you be able to move along this this realm and, you know, improve your mechanics in certain ways and train certain body parts to move in certain ways and train some sequencing to move in certain ways. Uh, but really, if you're doing golfy things in the gym, in my opinion, you're neither doing gym work or golf work. Like, I feel like if you're trying to do both and you end up doing neither, right? So, um, yeah. What were some examples, Sam? Like, what examples have you seen? I know you mentioned there about swinging the barbell. Um, what other examples have you seen of people, like, how far is too far in making things a little bit golf-specific? I've got some exercises I do do people that I'll, say, I'll share in a minute, but what would be too golf-specific for you in terms of... So, I've, I've seen workouts and, and some trainers out there posting like examples of workouts and every single exercise has rotation in. Yeah. And like, I think we're going to come to this a little later on with one of our other ones. Um, but not every single exercise needs rotation. I know golf is a rotational sport, but if we're looking to get power from the legs and different things like that, it's just, it's, there's no need to, to add rotation into every, every single exercise. Um, there's a time and a place for it. 100%. I like to use a lot of like, lunge rotations and stuff for my clients for warm-ups and things like that but that's that's never the main body of the workout is doing rotational work yeah uh 
Yeah, that's a great example. So I'm just trying to think some off the top of my head. Like I will, pref- uh, I'll prescribe um, some rotational work. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a, as a percentage, like it might form 10, 15% of the overall work that's being done. Um, yeah. You know, it might be one in 10 exercises or it might be one in 10, you know, of, of the sets being done. It might be a rotational movement. Um in fact, I try and limit the amount of rotational work I do with golfers simply because the amount of ro- they rotate throughout the week, right? Like, how, if you take your average so golfer, they're probably just in a golf club, like, maybe, what, 500 times a yeah. week? Like, that's yeah. that's a hell of a lot of rotation. Like, do we really want to be adding extra rotation onto the golfer yeah. for just for the sake yeah. of it, right? Um, and I know we're saying here of all things that you can do wrong, but I think what would be a good way of making things a little bit more golf-specific is protecting yourself against overuse of those golf specific movements. So if you're constantly okay. swinging the golf club, constantly exploding through your left side as a right-handed golfer, then why don't we look at actually doing a little bit of deceleration, anti-rotation work, protecting, anti-rotation. maybe a little bit more rotating to the other side, maybe rotating to even yeah. things up, you know, maybe a lot of golfers limit, don't, can't move as fast to their left as they can to their right, because they're back to like, so why yeah. don't we work, spend that time that's golf specific correcting these overuse things yeah. rather than keep drilling in the same things you're doing in the golf swing? Yeah, 100, 100%, 100%. Like, that's why I was going to come on to with the anti-rotation stuff. I'd probably say that, for depending on my golfers, depending on how much they're playing, that might actually play more of a part of their training than rotational work. It's stopping yourself rotating and just what, to protect the spine. Um, protect it more getting stronger. Agreed. What, what goal-specific stuff would you prescribe? So how far would we go with this? What would be... What would be uh, useful golf specific? When we say when we say golf specific, we mean things that look kind of similar to the golf swing. What type of golf specific movements would you say are worth it? So I'm going to go back to my favorite phrase and say it depends, right? So for golfers of mine that are struggling to kind of use the floor and generate any speed and power. I've got a like a rotational kettlebell press that I use that goes from um, trail side to lead side. Um, quite hard to describe on the podcast. It's kind of like a semi deadlift. You could push up and rotate into your into your lead side with a with a kind of a shoulder press thing there. But it's really just generating through the floor, and that, that mimics the swing as closely as possible. Um, other stuff are like pal off presses. We've got like full cable rotations some different hip dissociation stuff I'd do, but like nothing's a full, nothing looks like a swing. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing there that looks like a full seven iron swing with a weight or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. We're not talking like weighted golf club. Uh, yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah. I, I kind of, I would yeah. say I'm on a similar thing to you. Like, I think if people are struggling with sequencing, I quite like, um, like a med, med ball throw, plus a med ball throw is pretty good. Teaching people to, to explode from the lower half is, is useful. Um, I like disassociating using cables quite often. I like people rotating only the hips, rotating only the torso, understanding the the ability to disassociate lower from upper upper segments. Yeah. Um, I would yeah. add some kind of rotation management sometimes to some rows and presses just to get the body moving in that way. Um, yeah. I've got a weird exercise that I I feel like I built, I made it. I feel like I made it up. Um, I'm sure someone's done it before me, but I feel like I made it up, which is almost like a golf. Uh, I call it a golf chop. So it's almost like a bit of a chopping yes. movement. Uh, the kind of movements of golf swing great for training in tilt uh, and training in like lead side extension so i like doing these type of things but you're right that none of them actually look like a natural golf swing a moving a golf swing they don't, help, and, and, it's, they don't and it's also yeah and it's also look we've got two different points like we're kind of saying none of it's going to look like the golf swing but also the stuff that does maybe resemble some rotation we're talking five to 15% of the workout. The majority of the stuff is absolutely f- furthest away from the goal to impossible. And that's the mistake we make is that I see, I see people make is that everything looks like a golf swing. Everything's got rotation. Everything's like a cable chop and things like that. I mean, you're missing out on so many other things that you could be doing. Yeah. Agreed. And when you see, you know, you'll see videos and, different maybe posts on social media of the, of the PGA tour players training in, in their gyms before workouts and, you know, you're never going to see a video of them doing a a normal lunge or doing a bench press or doing a normal row. Like you will only see the rotational stuff because that's what people yeah. want to see, right? Like they want to see, you know, 
someone doing a pull with rotation because that looks like the goal swing and that looks cool, right? No one's going to film the boring exercise, right? You've got to think that video's that video has been done by someone who's filmed it because they thought like that's either their client or they're filming it because it looks cool. They're not doing it because this is the yeah. staple of their workout and they do this every week and that's what's been the foundation of all their yeah. training, right? So um, yeah, I suppose it's just like a an understanding. It's, that, it's where actually yeah. I'd give, it's where I'd give a really good shout out to the. Um... Uh, the EPTI guys, um, the guys over at England Golf who look after the strength and conditioning, like a lot of their posts are literally like golfers just doing partial squats. Yeah. Like they posted a video, I think it was yesterday or today, of Rory training in the open with his trainer doing chest press, dumbbell chest press. Yeah. Like, yes, he then went on to a ballistic med ball throw with his trainer, but like they, they not, none of those look like a golf swing. There's no rotation there. Um, they're really good at just saying like, look, this is trained like an athlete. Yep. It doesn't need to, you're doing the golf, you're swinging the club. That's, that's going to look after itself. Um, and it's a point I want to come on to later on with one of our other mistakes that we've seen. Um, but yeah, I think we've kind of covered the, the two, um, two golf specific there. Like um, it's there, it's got its place guys, but I think we're going to come on to this now with this next point. There's way more areas that you need to be to cover in to, to kind of maximize your performance and, and everything out, out on the course. Agreed. So, it, well, it's not, are we calling it number two or are we calling it number four? Like, what are we counting forwards or backwards? We're going, well, we're going forwards. So go, go right, we've done so one. We've got five. We're not doing like a some kind of top 40 countdown. We're no. <laughs> avoiding the hype. All right. So two. Um would you know if you get this right, then you're probably dealing with number one. Uh is having no structure or plan. So mm-hmm. where I see this is kind of walking in the gym, not really knowing what you're doing that day. Uh, you know, what's free, what equipment's free, what can I go in and do? Um, I can't remember what weight I lifted last week, so let me just put a weight in that feels about right today. Oh, I saw that on Instagram yesterday. Let me give that a try. Um, not really having any any set structure, which avoids our opportunity to do what is a very, very important phrase in, in our world of progressive overload and actually starting to make improvements over time and actually get stronger, get faster and actually make progress, right? Um, how often do you see this, Sam, of people kind of wandering around Willy, willy nilly with no structural plan. Uh, so when I was the PT in the gym, it's every every single day. It's you're, you're hundreds of people, hundreds of people walk into the gym. Typically, either just walk onto the first cardio machine they do, what they see, and just spend some time there, and then they'll jump over to the little cables next to them, maybe, and do a few reps there. Then they'll jump back and just literally like. Just whatever it is, is that thing that you said, it's whatever is free. Um, I think it, it happens so, so, so much. Um, and it's actually probably the biggest comment I get from clients that like not actually potentially getting them stronger, but just them following a plan. The difference they see in performance is absolutely staggering, like absolutely staggering. Setting setting goals, I think, is the first step of having the structure. So saying, right, what do I need to work on? What do I want to work on? Is that power? Is it speed? Is it aesthetics? Is it strength? And then going, right, how am we going to get there? How much time do I have? How many workouts do I have? Perfect. How much time can I do for each workout? What equipment do I have? Boom, 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 boom. Perfect. Now we've set a plan. We've got the workouts. We've got the exercises there. But we're also then going to track what weight we've done each session. So we know that, like you said, we need that progressive overload. Otherwise, we there's no point. Otherwise, we are literally just wasting time. If you're just going to go into the gym with no idea what you did the session before or the week before the month before and you just pick a weight up and go oh yeah this feels okay today like we we're just wandering around in the dark pretty much yeah we, we actually we do get weaker without realizing it when we do that i've had periods in my training where i've definitely done that uh periods when i was a bit lost and just didn't really know what i was trying to work towards and didn't really have much structure and you get weaker you do get weaker because you you're letting laziness get in the way that day. And if you, that day you feel like you can do that, then the next week you do a little bit less. And then before you know it, you, you can definitely get weaker. Um, in the opposite to that, when you do have a set structure and you do have a set plan, without even realizing it, you get stronger and stronger and stronger just simply because you just like, okay, I did that last week. Let me do that again. And then, let me, you know, I would general 2.5 rule of like trying to do 2.5% more the next week. Suddenly you, yeah. week on week, you get stronger and your results are just like, yeah, as you said, it's like it's dramatic the difference you can make there. Um, 
I think the, the one that interests me with this is half the battle with people in the gym is getting them there. And yeah, the amount of times I see this where people have actually, they've already got over that whole barrier of motivation of being able to get to the gym and find the time and get past all of those barriers. But then they're not making most of the time when they're there and not getting the most bang for their buck of the time that they're, they're spending there. And I think that's, yeah. it's, a, it's a real, if you find this person, they're such a unique person to work with because there's so much potential they can make just by putting some structure in. Just be like, okay, we're just going to yeah. do this and just you can get better each week and there you go. Um, we haven't got really whole battle with persuading you to go and finding out your time and your barriers and, and all that stuff. It's like, okay, well, we're, we're already going, so let's just make your going better. It is one thing that like massively changed my training was a couple of years ago is offsetting that to someone else, offsetting my training programs to someone else because I was just, I was not, not having a structure. I just found myself that I was always prescribing myself exercises that I like, maybe not what the best for me. So then for the last three years, I've been working with a coach. So now one is one less thing for me to worry about because I, I, all I do is program and schedule workouts. I don't want to do my own. Um, but the difference I've seen in my training is just absolutely staggering. It's, it's, it's amazing. Um, what's also helped in this, not quite so much for me, but for a lot of clients and a lot of golfers I see is, is having no structure and then panicking that they haven't gone to the gym. So then they go to the gym and they do too much and it might be the day before a tournament or before when they're playing or before a holiday or anything like that. And having a structure just stops all of that. Um, yeah, it's one thing that people are really bad at is is scheduling. And then you kind of get that self-doubt of, oh, damn, I haven't been to the gym this week. Oh, I need to go three days in a row. Yeah. So, well, actually, that, that's really not beneficial. That's not going to help us at all. You're going to be in pain, but um, pain's not really the best way to to measure good workouts. Yeah, I think there's probably like a, a bit of a personality trait linked to this as well. You know, people that generally aren't, don't like too much structure in their lives or they don't like to have too much, you know, organization and they different things. And then there'll be other people that do the complete opposite. I've definitely got clients that are the, the complete opposite to that. They're absolutely obsessed with having structure. They write every single rep, every single weight in, yeah. no matter what, like they write that in. And, you know, that, that person obviously gets better results, but it doesn't mean you have to go to that like extreme level. So exactly. It's just, I, I mean, for me at the moment, for example, I don't necessarily have a plan that I follow. I've probably got a selection of exercises that I'm currently using and rotating through. And I'll just keep log of what I do. And then each week I'll try and have at least one exercise that I do, you know, my best on, like set a record on that exercise. And if I keep doing that week on week, then just generally I just, get a little bit stronger and if i hit a bit of a plateau i'll just refresh it and try some new exercises and keep yeah. moving forward that way I'd, I'd also i'd also like to point out that you've probably earned the right yeah. to to have that flexibility from years and years of structure of training yeah like right? in the same way that uh you know i, I could basically just walk into a room and just think of a plan off the top of my head like of a, of a decent workout yes. well structured with enough sets enough reps enough balance between upper body lower body push pull like i can just do that off the top of my head as you as you, so you know as you said you, you've earned the right to do that um in the same way that my mum can look at any bit of food and tell exactly how many calories are in it right she's just you know it's just from practice uh so it's yeah. uh yeah you're right but i think the more more people have had that structure in their lives then the easier it is them to make something off the top of their head i suppose um yeah 100 right, it's common 100 it's, it's not uncommon yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely right bringing us on to number three so we've got kind of misunderstanding how to train your core and we've kind of touched upon this with the two golf specific stuff with just adding rotation stuff not enough anti-rotation it is one of my biggest pet peeves that core training just seems to be based around six pack and just seems to be sit-ups yep and like actually the core is so much more than just the front of your abs <laughs> um especially if we we're, we're talking about golf like being able to perform a sit-up is there's absolutely zero change that's going to make to us if we're looking to get injured less or swing the club faster or move quicker or hit out of a, a rough lie or out of a bunker. It's just not going to help us there. Um, it's probably as well actually not going to help you look any better either because that's all nutrition as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd almost this go as is far as, uh, I'd, I'd go as far as to say that it's going to hinder you. Uh, I've definitely had a few Agreed. clients who have come to me um, – 
there's a, there's a type of client that I really like working with uh, who are like ex-gym rats. Uh, it's my favorite thing because I'm one of them. Uh, and and all the, these guys that used to do like loads and loads of sit-ups or I still do like, you know, oh, I always, always do 100 sit-ups a day or every morning I get up and do this ab core work, blast, whatever, off YouTube. And they are so stiff through the midriff and they don't realize that your ability to rotate your shoulders is hugely related to the stiffness of your abs. If your abs are stiff, you ain't gonna be able to rotate. If you if you think of a seatbelt going across your body, like everyone always thinks of their back and their lats when they think about rotation, like your abs are like a huge part of that. Like if you can't yeah, rotate, absolutely. it's probably because your abs are also tight. So all yeah. of this crunching, all of this sitting up, all of the then being sat down and being slouched in that posture, like the front of you can just get so tight. Let's forget back pain because those people are, are not interested in that because they're probably too young. But Think of your ability to rotate is going to be near, so like significantly reduced. I feel like hundred percent, one hundred bigger, one hundred percent. So, what would you kind of recommend? What would you? We did touch on this earlier, but what what exercises would you recommend for for core training for golfers? Yeah, what's the, what's a few exercises that you love love prescribing? I love stuff that um, that forces you. I really like the term bracing uh, to to, to brace. Yeah. And I really like exercises that force you to brace. So you basically have no choice but but to brace. Uh, you mentioned Paloff Press earlier, one of my favorite exercises to, to program. Um, I also like some like kind of tabletop exercises, like just touching on the toes like on all fours, uh, being braced up in that position and then playing in that position. So a little bit of forward motion, sideways motion, yeah. single arm motion, single leg motion, like things that are going to challenge the inverted commas core, but almost in a way that you don't have a choice but to have to brace yeah. that system yeah, yeah. and think of it more of a system. I'll, 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 I'll expand on that because that's one of my favorite things to do and, and these aren't core exercises but it's just unilaterally loading squats or lunges yeah, yeah. or or dead anything like or even single leg deadlifts like that alone if you're bracing correctly your core has to work so hard otherwise you're just going to fall over Correct. um and there's a massive misunderstanding um massive misconception that actually like if you're loading your core properly with squats, deadlifts, even lunges, like I, f- I think with the, the, they've done studies with squats, you actually get a much more stimulus within your core than you would just doing a sit up. Um, so now we're going back a little bit to structure. No one wants to be in the gym for hours and hours and hours. We want to be in and out. We want to make it as efficient as possible. Train your core doing when you're doing lower body. Yeah. Like you're going to get almost double the returns on your time there. Um, another one for bracing, which I absolutely love doing are like farmer's walks. Yeah. Um, so just grabbing one heavy kettlebell, one heavy dumbbell on one side, just doing a few laps of the gym up and down 30 seconds, changing hands that promotes such a strong core. It's, it's one of my favorite things. to do. Yeah. And again, like, I think just an extra piece on this, which is useful is we, if you got someone who is completely unaware to just carry something around, they probably would carry it around poorly. So also just having a little bit of work, not so much of laying on the floor and doing a hundred crunches, but having a little bit of work of just like being investigating. What, what like if you have like to engage your Yeah. So, start, you know, I, I like just getting people laying on the floor and saying, right, can you do like squeeze your glutes? Can you feel your glutes? Like, even as you're, you know, you might, people might be sat yeah. in the car listening to this, you know, I'm just standing here now. I'm just, you can just tense left, glute, right, glute, right. Just what does that feel like? Okay, cool. What does it feel like to like squeeze the lower part of my back? Okay. What does it feel like to squeeze a, the core? What does it feel like to squeeze my obliques? What does it feel like to breathe out fully, to breathe in fully? Like, and just experiment a little bit of these and almost get your connection back to some of these muscles. Because for most people that are sat down all day and not really doing much, this stuff's kind of a bit alien. Like these parts of our body become yeah. a little bit alien. Um, and yeah. just getting back in tune with some of these muscles is, is a really good way to go. Um, I absolutely love doing that with, um, with a lot of clients who come in and we'll do some cool work and they'll be able to just whack out, say if we're doing dead bugs, for example, so you're lying on your back, you're lifting one arm back as the other leg extends forward. They'll do a whole set, turn to me and said, didn't feel it at all. Really easy. I'm like, right now let's start. Just push your hips forward, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the core. Tense your arms, tense your legs. Imagine you're moving through sand. Now give me just a set of six. Do it and go, oh my God. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you, now, you, now you're using your core. Now we're being efficient. Now we're, now we're actually working the muscles that we should be. Do a set and they go, oh my God, completely different. Yeah. So it, it's another thing. It's, it's, it's understanding how to actually engage your core. So then all the movements you're doing, it's the same with like um, pal-off presses and any rotation stuff there. The movement can 
can be completely different when your core is engaged correctly. Yeah. Now, I want to make this clear. I do not mean that's me tensing so much like this. And I, I'm, then I'm so rigid. That there's no rotation because that's not what we want. We want a strong core, but still to be able to rotate and turn through our shoulders and hips and things. So it's it's finding the balance. And it's like you said there, it's playing about with, with how that contraction feels within the muscles. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, you know, just go back on the thing you said with the, with the six pack and the crunches and different things, like the whole mentality around around that is is so lost. Like if you think you're training a muscle, really, like we can do a few things to it. We can make it stronger. Uh, we can make it more powerful. We can increase the size of it. Um when you say those things, suddenly now you're thinking, hang on, hang on, how do those sit-ups give me, give me a feedback? Like, you can increase the size of those muscles if you want by really hypertrophying them, but this is not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to, we're trying to strengthen, we're trying, we're trying to stabilize. Um, we're actually, for, for a lot of my guys, we're trying to lengthen the core muscles. Yeah. We're trying to lengthen everything because most of them have got the desk workers and spend, spend all their sat down hunched over. So we're actually trying to create that length. That's why I love doing dead bugs, tabletop things, and, and all rotational stuff where we are, where we are up yeah. right. Because that's what we want the core to be strong in. If you think of a sit-up, we're hunched over, and yes, the core's strong there. When am I want in that position day-to-day life or in a golf swing? We're not. So, so why are we training to be strong in this position here? So true. Oh, we needed that, didn't we? Let's do a whole, let's do yeah, a whole podcast on, on, the, on the core. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. Like, we can, yeah, do, we, can, we can talk about the function of, of the core in the golf swing. We can talk about, like what is you know well, there is no answer but we can say like what is the core like what actually are we talking about when we talk about that um what are some ways that we recommend people would activate these areas what are some problems if we don't have good strength here um yeah that would be, that'd be pretty fun we'll stick that on the list yeah yeah i like that i like that a lot moving on joe what have we got next yeah number four is you know we're basically working our way down the body now because we're saying a big mistake for strength training for golfers is not training the lower half, not training the legs, Massive. simply only training the upper body. Uh, and you know, this is, this is common away from golf as well. Um, but it seems to be, you know, it, it's obviously more important for golfers if, if golfers are trying to imp- improve their performance. Um, yeah, I understand why I get it. I get it. I've had plenty of conversations with, it. I understand fully why people do this. Uh, why they avoid it but the biggest conversation i have with people with this is your perception of training legs is the problem of why you don't train legs people's perception you know this is going to lead us on to the last one as well but people's perception that when they train legs they can't walk for three days they can't stand up and sit down off the toilet they can't you know they can't move around like that's why people are avoiding training legs alongside the fact that they want to look better in the mirror and do whatever but you know you've also got legs in the mirror Mirror doesn't cut off. Well, it goes, it goes back to it goes back to the the structure, right? A lot of people feel like leg day per se, if that's the split that they're doing, absolutely kills them. So then the next day they can't. Yeah, the bottom, them, right? Like for most people, yeah. they're going to say, oh, "I'm going to do you know, upper body," but and then the 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 last day of the week that they would potentially go to the gym would be the leg day and everything else becomes more more yeah. interesting by the way. It's, it's why and i know i'm going down a bit of a rabbit hole here but it's, it's why i don't like prescribing those types of splits most of my all of my workouts for clients are all full bodies yeah all full bodies managing the volume making sure there's no stiffness and no soreness for the next day the next day after when you when you want to go and play golf and perform um i'm a little bit of a psychopath here training legs is probably one of my favorite things to do yeah big Big heavy compound list for me. I've absolutely always loved them. Um, seeing how a lot of testing I do jump wise, seeing how they're correlated is 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 staggering. Um, seeing how then kind of vertical jump is correlated to swing speeds is is massive again. So for me, for my golfers, it's, it's one thing that I quickly try to push how important it is doing. Um, and it's not only training legs, like doing compound movements. You, like we said before, you're training your core, you're training your back, you're training your upper body. Everything has to work hard when you're doing those movements. Um, it's also actually going back to the first point. It's a full body movement. It's probably a bit more golf specific than if we're just sat down on a machine doing doing a cable fly or whatever like that. Yeah. Um Totally true. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with, with my training in a second, but I think there's a few methods that I've used 
for clients that definitely say, well, I've had clients that literally say to me, I, I hate training legs. Uh, chance I'm not going to do it. Um, and with those guys, what I've done is I've basically added like one or two exercises at the start of their sessions. So I've basically given them these types of training that they want, which is, you know, more upper body, bodybuilding style. Like I give them a little bit of what they want, but I'll include at the start of it. Okay, but you've got to get these two leg exercises done first and then you can you can go away and do that. And, you know, sometimes that's selling the point, you know, we're going to do a big compound movement. We're going to get these hormones pumping and actually going to get better result from your training. Like I'd sell them that a little bit. And I've noticed that some people are happy to do that. They'll do, you know, one or two leg exercises, then they'll go and do the rest of their session and they're happy with that. Um, I've done also the full body stuff, like you said, that's definitely worked with people in the past. Um, I've even done things where I've said to them, okay, we're, we're going to, we're going to do the legs, but don't, we're literally only going to do the machines. Like literally just want you to activate, just do some abduction with stuff, get the glutes activated. And for now, all you're going to do is leg curl and leg extension. And they're actually happy to do that. So it's almost like picking your battles and trying to, Oh, it's finding it's finding where the starting place is and going from yeah, there. Right? Right. When you're, you're, that's you're not that's scary, thing. then you're like, okay, maybe we move into doing some glute bridges, or maybe we move into that's doing awesome. some leg press now, or some. You know, we're not just going to jump you straight into weighted Bulgarian spit squats, right? Like, yeah. death on earth, right? Like, we're going to not for me because I love it. Look, I'm weird like you, but like, we're not, we're not just going to throw you into intense like yeah. lower body sessions. Um, if you're someone that really doesn't like it, right? This is what, because there are people that do enjoy training legs and there's people that prefer training legs. They feel yeah. strong in their legs. Uh, one of my clients, for example, has always felt very strong in his legs, feels weak in his upper body. So he's always favored training legs because they were strong and he felt more confident in training legs. So, you know, everyone's different, but it's definitely something that we see. It's a bit more of a, a bit more of a trend. That, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and obviously for golf, it is, it is so important to have strong legs to be able to push through the floor and everything like that for stability um, within the swing and stuff. It's, it is so important, guys. So if you are one of those that doesn't like training legs, just like Joe said, just do literally start the workout. Just do a few exercises. It doesn't need to be absolutely massive. Don't kill yourself. To, don't do leg day. Um, just build a couple of exercises into the start of your workouts because I guarantee you'll see the rewards pay off. Agreed. I'll tell people what my current... Uh... So I do upper body, lower body split, although Sam wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. let me do that if he was my coach. I do, I do do upper body, lower body. Um, and my lower body session at the moment is basically some glute activation stuff, probably on like uh, abductor machine, probably. And then I would do something probably like a split squat lunge weighted. Mm-hmm. That would be like my one main exercise that I'll do for the lower body. And then I will do probably single leg, leg press, leg extension leg curl that's my leg workout yeah don't ink yeah. from it unless i like really yeah. the, the split squats and i can do that twice a week no problem all the weight can move up yeah. feel strong in my legs feel fine like that's my bare minimum leg workout um yeah yeah and that's fine for me like i've as you said i've probably earned the right to do that but it I was, that's, that's what i was just about to say i think if i give that workout to some clients or, or or people just starting in the gym like that is an absolute killer workout do you know what i mean um yeah i didn't think of that <laughs> maybe it is yeah it, it would be it would be for, for especially for people that don't train their legs yeah. if they're doing that twice a week like even though you can manage volume and manage kind of what weights you're using and things like split squats themselves for people just doing i've had clients come in and we'll just do like some single uh just body weight split squats just focusing on tempo and stuff get messages the next day being like what have you done just, just gone yeah yeah, yeah, I, think yeah just, uh, I think there's a mobility piece really as well there like i don't we've not we're not we've not spoken about mobility tonight but i definitely notice a difference if i'm feeling stiff and then i do that session i'll ache more whereas if i'm feeling pretty yeah. good and i've you know i've been pretty good with my mobility i've not really spent too much time sat down like i'm feeling pretty good that i won't get ache as much i definitely think with legs there's more of a there's more of a like we're more like tear sensitive i think on the lower half and i think that's why sometimes our doms yeah. get so extreme um yeah yeah, yeah. when a little bit off the- but it, it just it depends on it depends on starting point um where where people are and there's a there's there's ways of of managing how you go in to start training your legs that you won't get that fatigue to to stop you playing yeah. um and this is all kind of what we want to aim to do for golfers, right? The point is to play your best golf. So we don't want you being in the gym. So then you can't play your best golf. That's not that's not what we want. It's about finding ways and, and every person is completely different. And that's why I think what makes us such good coaches that we find what clients 
like, how they're going to stick to it, and then you can find a way there. Um, if you were a client of mine that says, right, that upper body, lower body split works for you completely, then like as long as you're going to the gym, it works. The proof's in the pudding, right? Yeah. Um, it's, it's finding something that you're going to stick to, and then, then you can reinforce those habits in and, and gradually build. Yeah, up. great. Yeah, starting starting line and gradually building up for legs is uh, is is definitely a a sensible method. Agreed. Cool. What's the last one, Sam? Number five. So we've got training for looks rather than for function. Now, caveat at the start, I'm going to say this obviously does completely depend on your goal, but we're kind of assuming for this that everyone we're talking about, the, the goal is to get better at golf and to, be, to perform better on course during your practice, lower your handicap. Yeah, I, um, I, I'm going to throw in a curveball completely on that and say I've seen better results in physique for myself and for other people when function has been at the forefront of the of the thought. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and and I think one of the biggest factors in, in that that I've seen is because it's much easier to measure and it's much funner to measure and stick to. Right, this is my goal. Whether that's I want to drop to a certain handicap or I want to get to a certain swing speed, that is a much better goal to stick to rather than I want to look a type of way or I want my my obliques to pop out a little bit more. I want to get down to X percent body fat. Um, the performance or, goals, or, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the performance goals are, are much easier and much funner as well, guys, to to work towards. Yeah, I, there's there's a couple of things I've said that, but I think a good example is uh, I've done audible or onboarding for a new client this week who had been through that similar journey. So they'd had coaches before, uh, online coaches. I would probably put them in a bracket of like transformation coaches. You know, we were talking about, you know, significant weight loss, like all about physique, all about looks, before and after photos, that type of thing. And he'd lost a significant amount of weight, um, around 30% of his body weight he'd lost, uh, which was obviously huge, um, but gained majority of it back. Loves his golf, really likes playing his golf. And we had this conversation. I basically said to him, like, if you keep training for looks, then okay, fine, you can make progress, but eventually you're going to keep just coming back through this cycle again and again and again and again because where do you finish? You get down to 6%, yeah. then what? Then you want 5%. You can't, there's no, you can't, stay, there's no, you can't sustain, you can't there's sustain that level better of than you. There's always going to be someone looks better. Yeah. So we're always on this like endless chase and it's demoralizing. It's like I, I've spoken to plenty of people, probably similar to my age now, who went through this phase of like aesthetical, you know, pursuit and it's is miserable it makes you miserable it's, it's no good like it really is i'll have my hands up like for years and years and years before i started playing golf that was that was the only reason yeah, i trained for um and then like you said the um when i actually started training for for more strength and i was setting goals for right how much i wanted to deadlift and actually gave myself long targets there i quickly found my physique was better than it ever had been yeah. before. And I was going to say, it's, yeah, it's I'm, still, not, yeah, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, and it still forms some of my training now. I, I will admit that. It still yeah. forms uh, some of my motivation to train. It still forms some of my um, programming, I, you know, some some of the rep ranges, some of this stuff. Like, do I train like a, like if I, if, if there was an, you know, if you were to write me a training plan and I said, all I care about is getting better at golf, it wouldn't look like the way that I train now. You know, I'd probably get a yeah. bit of a balance in there. But my motivation to keep, training is multitudinal between the you know the aesthetical side and the golf performance side and yeah. when yeah. days when you feel like you can't be bothered like the golf side is the thing that's going to drag you like I, I fully believe yeah. that like if you can have the golf as your focus that's what drags you that's why people go to the driving range when it's freezing cold and you can barely feel your hands like we are mental we're, for we're, this sport and like, we're obsessed with yeah, we're obsessed we absolutely with nothing. Nothing. mentally yeah trying to get better at this game exactly. and if you know that like, you can do do these workouts follow a plan for however long and that's gonna affect how much you can play golf or how hard you can hit the ball how far you can hit the ball like i just know for a fact people are going to stick to that you're going to adhere to that program much much more than oh i, I want to get a pump and look a type of way in the mirror yeah, like i just want my arms to look bigger in the nightclub on a friday night cool yeah yeah Right. And, and and the question you got to ask yourself for all these things is like, at what cost, right? Like, at what cost am I? Right the opportunity like, cost of the time, yeah. right? Unless, unless, unless you've got all the time in the world to go to the gym as much as you want, which we both know isn't true for, for most of our clients, we know for all of our clients, 
the opportunity cost there is you're not doing exercises that are benefiting your yeah. golf or benefiting or even not even your golf just longevity of life right like all these crazy kind of i've had i've had clients that have shown me crazy transformations of putting on weight or losing weight and whatever that is it's not healthy for your body just to bounce up and down in these weights like that. It's, it's really not. Your mind either. Like, I just um, think it's, it's yeah. your mind just gets messed up with this stuff. Like it's constantly a step of how Agreed. it looks rather than what it can like. It, you're constantly thinking, what does it look like rather than what can I do? What you can do yeah. becomes irrelevant. Like it's more just about how it looks and that's your determination of if you're happy or not. Yeah, well, completely, completely. Um, agree this is a conversation uh, I had with him this week when I was on board. It was basically like, if we can, shift your mindset now into thinking I am training for golf. I'm training for my performance. I'm training to get better at this sport that I love. Then your motivation to do this is going to be, you know, tenfold and your adherence over the long term is going to be significantly greater. Like I know for, for sure that my turnover rate of clients is probably, I don't know, five to 10 times as long as it was when I was doing non-golf specific training. Absolutely. Like, Completely. And that's probably under, underselling it. Like it, the the length of time that people commit to this and stick to it is, yeah. there's, there's just no comparison. No yeah, yeah. Well, you, you they see that right. You're getting them out of pain, or then be able to, to turn more or move more and play more, and that then becomes way more motivating than oh great i got a great picture on the beach for the summer holidays or anything like that like yeah, it doesn't like, last it doesn't sorry last. to hurt your feelings but you're not going to care about that in 20 years time absolutely you absolutely. think why didn't i spend that time out with my family enjoying myself yeah playing yeah. yeah um and i think the other side of this like we've spoken a lot about mindset within that but actually just in terms of golf performance you're going to get so much more from training for function than you are for looks so you know, there's, there is some benefit of building some muscle. There will be some benefit of, uh, of strength that comes from that training that you're doing. But if you're going to fully optimize that, then the focus has to be on building strength, building power, building functional muscle, building functional size and getting your body to be able to do more things rather than improve the way it looks right. That's what we're getting out yeah. locally with that yeah. one. Um, absolutely. Absolutely agreed there. Absolutely agreed there. Right. Let's, um, so that's our top, that's not even our top five. That's five that we've probably said our most common mistakes for, for strength training for yeah. golfers. And then we, we were coming up with the list for this and we've obviously come up with, with quite a few more. So let's just rattle through, rattle through these other ones. So we did touch upon this earlier, but one of them is, is training to ache. So using soreness, how tired you are, how achy you are after workout as a barometer for, for being a good workout. Yep. It's the worst things you can do. And we, we've spoken about this before on um, strength training and things like that. Um, you might get a little bit of soreness when you're starting a new program um, or switching rep ranges or anything like that, but it shouldn't be every single workout, every single day after the gym or two days after the gym, you shouldn't be super super sore then you can't perform yep. um stop using sore as your metric yeah. absolutely absolutely joe what other ones have we uh we got neglecting recovery uh something we see often yeah. um you know not getting enough sleep not refueling your body not spacing workouts with enough time between them um you know i trained biceps one today thing, but i might as well just train biceps again today because you know i'm going to the club tonight you know that type of thing so um yeah definitely neglecting recovery is something that we see uh quite often quite often and when with this is funny I, I often see guys kind of talking to me about to get him blood levels checked and checking out how their nutrition is and like really deep diving into the nitty-gritty of things when actually finding out that they're getting six hours sleep a night not not drinking enough water and it's like well let's get these basic things right first and then once they're right then we can start getting a bit more specific yeah, with the i only thing. consume alcohol and coffee and get four hours sleep a night but <laughs> i should probably go and check out my uh should probably get a whoop yeah. right like i probably should work out like what's going on <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Tell you that. all right uh yeah. what's the next one <laughs> next one we've got is ignoring mobility um kind of comes across with the other ones of kind of having no structure and also training more for looks and function, like finding time for mobility, especially if you do feel, if you know that you need it. So if you've been told by a coach that you're lacking rotation, whether that's in the spine, the hips, the neck, anything like that there, but also it can, it can be just easily fixed by, by training for range of motion, making sure you're, you're really accessing some different movements to, to move joints to full extension and things like that. Um, 
with this one, I'd also say like personally for me, I know when I've done mobility, like you just your body just feels so much better. Yeah, you just you feel like to move and perform so so much more. It's and it's it's one thing that I absolutely love doing. So there's a, probably like there's a new wave of golfers that I've seen knocking about the golf courses that would fit very nicely into this category, and there seems to be guys that have probably gone online and bought a polo a little bit too small for them. They're obviously training a lot in the gym, obviously for looks and function. And it's in the golf club, and you're like, they're literally as stiff as a board. I don't know where these guys have come yeah. from, but they seem to have been multiplying over the last like five years or so. And I think you know, it's more with uh, the long drive trend that's getting more and more popular. And they just see these big, strong guys. But actually, like, oh, like, I'm strong. I can do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like um, Joe Miller, for example, I've met him a couple of times down at Essendon, which is just down the road from us. Like, he's one of the most flexible guys yeah, I this know. This is it. Absolutely. Yeah. But, Built, built like an absolute unit, but is so mobile, and that's how we can generate it such, a, like, such it, rotation. Exactly, like yeah. you know, we're not we're not saying you need to be like loosey goosey, right? You need to you need to be able to move and apply this force. But you're, all that training you're doing in the gym, you're just getting like for a lot of these guys that are not doing it through through full range specifically, just uh, they're just getting stiff stiff different, stiff different, different. Yeah, like they're just getting they're strong but stiff, and unfortunately, it just doesn't serve you very well in golf. Like. It, being strong and stiff just doesn't serve you great. Like you have to be able to use that. You have to really yeah. apply that strength in a rotational way. Like you, you have to be able to apply that. And if you basically just can't move, then it's not going to yeah. not going to serve you very well. So absolutely. And then I think we had one more, Joe. What was the last one? Uh, we've got one for not warming up and cooling down. Um, I'm not well, great yeah. for this. We all know it's not. It's no. It's no secret. Um, but again, you've got just, the right to do that. Um, and I just definitely yeah. think that most people should be taking time to. So at least just doing a little bit of checking their body, like what have I done today? You know, actually to be fair, I've been sat at the desk for 10 hours and I feel a little bit stiff. Maybe I should actually take a bit of time to to release off my hips and activate some areas. I actually prefer activation rather than doing anything else really for before workout. Yeah, I think activation is a good word for us for, for warming up. And um, Agreed. and cool down, you know, great time to do a little bit of mobility then after a session if you want to. Um, I like just breath work, like after a session is just like gold. Really? Like just, you've had a busy day, you've well done for getting to the gym, just, treat yourself with five minutes laying down on your back with your eyes closed working on your breathing yeah yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. so i think it's a really interesting one they're kind of us talking about that and seeing the the common trends we see in people and the common mistakes that some are some really easy fixes there guys that just some low-hanging fruit that you're m- much more you'll be able to make your training way more efficient you'll be able to see much more progress within your training within your golf and hopefully with that you become a better golfer and the handicap starts coming down and you can play more golf get injured less all of the things that we've kind of gone on and on and on about but by following those things it's it just becomes much easier that's true and obviously now people can get access to tell me tell me fitness training plans they can get access to over 200 golf mobility videos they can get access to what's like 400 exercise videos so they don't always have to be golf specific uh they can access all of these core videos they can get access to we've got our, all our warm-ups all our pain they can get access to everything and that is by accessing the macro golf app which is now out so sam where do people go to get the macro golf app what can they do because we've just told all these people what they need to do for their strength training how they're going to do all this stuff and they say, oh my God, Sam, tell me where to get this app because I need it right now. Go on go on to your app store, guys, whether that's Android or Apple. Search Macro Golf and we will be there. Cool. Keep your eye out on our social medias as well because there might be some discounts out or message us. We'll see what we can do there. But it's all out. It's The feedback's been absolutely fantastic these last few weeks from um, through early, apps, uh, early app access, guys. And um, we've made some more changes, made some more tweaks. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yes, we've kind of done a bit of a bit of a trial period, a bit of a soft launch, and now we're starting to tell a few more people about it. So um, yeah, go and check that out. If you want, if you want to just see a little bit more information on the app, you can also go to uh, macrogolfonline.co.uk forward slash app, uh, and there'll be a little bit more information there. You can see a little bit more about what the app's about, what type of stuff's included in there, and obviously what what um, what training plans will be offered, what videos will be offered, and and all the different options for you. But yeah, we've we've worked ridiculously hard on this over the last however many months Sam's laughing away and uh yeah we've had a lot of a lot of lack of sleep and a lot of coffee and a lot of 
um, a lot of grinding away, uh, including recording. I think Sam recorded over like 150 exercise videos in one day. Uh, I don't know how we moved the next day. I think we played the golf the next day. Actually, I don't even know. We played golf. I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah, it, wasn't great. it wasn't great, but um, yeah, we've we've really put the hours in for you guys to to make this happen. And uh, yeah, go and check it out. As Sam said, you can go straight to the app stores or, or go to macrogolfonline.co.uk. Oh, yeah, check it out on the website. We've got we got a seven day free trial if you do want to have a play about and see if it is for you um but yeah like like joe said there's there's pretty much everything is covered there within some nutrition bits we've got all our habits you can schedule stuff in and yeah it's 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 a we're really proud of what we've created and i think it's really useful we are we are indeed uh guys thank you so much for taking the time out to listen to us today hopefully you found that informative and uh we'll we'll be bringing more episodes in the near future peace